بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضن له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off which is towards the uh, ending of towards the end of the uh, fourth uh, principle inshallah so what we'll do what we aim to do, uh, aim to do today is uh, we'll complete the fourth principle and then inshallah if we finish most likely we'll finish the lesson early so then from next week inshallah we'll we'll start from um, the fifth principle so we can keep on track stay in order inshallah keep things in order without uh, going through too much content in one go. So um, the Sheikh, he said, where we left off, he said, قَالَ وَيَزِيدُهُ وُضُوحًا وَيَزِيدُهُ وُضُوحًا يَزِيدُ هَذَا الْأَمْرُ وُضُوحًا وَبَيَانًا مَا صَرَّحَتْ بِهِ سُنَّةُ فِي هَذَا الْكَلَامِ الْكَثِيرِ الْبَيِّنِ الْوَاضِحِ لِلْعَامَ الْبَلِيدِ So when you're talking about the fourth principle, continuing from last week's lesson, then the Shaykh, he says, and he quotes the original author of this book, The Six Principles, وَيَزِيدُهُ وُضُوحًا Meaning, uh, and, and he gives extra emphasis in, clarif- in clarifying the principle. So the principle that we've been discussing, then the Shaykh, he says, uh, that incre- and he'll increase it in, or that affair has been increased in its clarity by way of what the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam i.e. the ahadith, his narrations, the narrations came with. So these narrations, they've clarified, not just the Qur'an itself has clarified, but the narrations of the ahadith of the Prophet Wasallam as well, in an extra and uh, further clarification of this principle. And then he goes on to say that it's very clear, and um, even up to the point where uh, a normal common person can understand it the most common of the common people can understand it like this so then the sheikh he goes on to explain he says ay an sunnata ja'at bi bayan al ulama'i wa wa sifat ahl al ilm walaw waqafa talib al ilm ala ba'd al kutub al musannafa fi hadha al bab wa bi khassatin Kitab Jami Bayan Al Ilm wa Fadlihi Libni Abdul Bar Li uh Li uh La Wajada Fihi Mina Sunati Vikru Fadli Al Ilmi wa Ala Mat Ahlihi Wasifati him fi though is fi though is sunatin nabi al karim alayhi salatu was salam. Fahua Amara Fawa Amrun Buyina fil Kitabi was sunati gayat il bayan. بُيِّنَا كَمَا قَالَ الْمُسَنِّفُ بَيَانًا وَاضِحًا لِلْعَامِ الْبَلِيدِ ذُكِرَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَسُنَّةِ نُسُوسٌ تُوَضِّحُ مِنْهُمُ الْعُلَمَاء وَاضِحًا لِلْعَامِ الْبَلِيدِ لكن المعرض والمتبع لهواه ونحو هؤلاء تختلط عليهم الأمور وَتَلْتَبِسُ إِمَّا بِسَبَبِ الْجَهْلِ أَوْ بِسَبَبِ اتِّبَاعِ الْأَهْوَى So in this paragraph, this introductory paragraph from where we left off, then the Shaykh, he goes on to say that what is this uh, clarification or this extra clarification? And as he mentioned, uh, it's from the, it's what the Sunnah came with. Um, and the most common of common people can understand it. It's that clear uh, and straightforward. And he says here, i.e., 
so he gives his further clarification and explanation. He says, i.e., the Sunnah. The Sunnah came with this clarification about uh, about the ulama, who are the the real scholars, the honest, the proper scholars, who are the the bona fide scholars, as they say, uh, with their descriptions, the people of knowledge, and the Sunnah came with. Uh, describing who they are so we can then identify who these people of knowledge actually are and so then he goes and says so even if for example um, a student of knowledge for example one who seeking knowledge for example was in in this lesson as just an, as one example then you'll see that if we kind of stop and ponder over some of the books uh, in this topic that we're discussing right now uh, and the Sheikh mentions a specific book called Jami'u Bayan al Ilm Wa Fadlihi. So, uh, obviously, clarifying knowledge and its virtue by a uh, scholar from the Times itself, Ibn Abdul Bar. Then he says that you would, if you read, if you read this book or similar uh, books in the same subject uh, or topic, then we'll find in it from the Sunnah the virtue of knowledge and the signs of its people and their descriptions and characteristics in light of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. And so the Shaykh, he says, therefore then, it is, um, it's an affair. It's an affair that is clear and has been clarified in the book and the sunnah, in the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To the depths of clarification, it's 100% clarified. Uh, and he goes on to say, like how the uh, author has clarified uh, here as well, that even the most common of common people can understand and be able to take this knowledge and apply it. It's not just restricted to some intelligent people, it's for it's everybody, everybody can once they have come across and learn this knowledge. And he says, as mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, there are uh, texts that clarify who the scholars are. Uh, but he says, however, with all this, with having all that said and done, um, however, uh, the fact is in situations, depending on the person, if they are following their desires, or if the affairs, like in terms of the religion, have become mixed up for them, and they've been, for example, told something wrong, and things have become clouded, as mentioned last week, the things are not clear, um, then what happens is either because of their ignorance, lack of knowledge, or because of them following their desires. And if the, if it's one of the two, you find if you find yourself, if we you find ourselves in this situation, then we won't be able to distinguish who the scholars are. So taking knowledge from the correct sources is important, of course. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, Qala, sara hada aghrab al -ashia. So then the Sheikh, he quotes the original author again, and he says, then the affair became such and such that this, it became strange. It became from the strangest of things. And he'll explain what he means by that. He says, Sara had al Amr Agrab al Ashia, Yani, Malifatul Ulama wa alamatihim, while Fukaha wa alamatihim, Sara had the Agrab al Ashia, Yani, Amru Sara Gariban, Bain and Nasi, La, La Yakadu, Yarifu, Illel Kala, Il Milhum, while Amr al Gharib, Aladi, La Yarifu, Illel Killati, Min and Nas, La Yarifu, Illel Killatu, Min and Nas. So what does it mean by, and then the, the affair became from the most strangest of things. And the Sheikh explains it to us here. He says it means that with it being clear that who the scholars are, the true scholars, their characteristics, their descriptions from the Quran and the Sunnah, with all that being there, then the affair became and reached such a point where people weren't able to identify properly who the people of knowledge are. And only a few people from them were able to do this. And that's what it means by that. So then he goes on to say, وَصَارَ الْإِلْمُ الْفِقْهُ وَالْبِذْءُ وَالْضَلَالَاتِ And so as a consequence then from there, then um, the uh, fiqh, understanding, uh, uh, knowledge and 
understanding of the religion became religious innovation and misguidance. That's what happened. And so the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, وَصَارَ الْعِلْمُ أَيْ الْعِلْمَ الصَّحِيحِ الْمُسْتَمَدُّ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَسُنَّةِ هُوَ الْبِدْعُ وَظَلَالَاتِ Meaning that, so he says that the knowledge, uh, the correct knowledge that is taken from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Instead, it, instead of taking from that, it became uh, uh, so it became innovation and misguidance. So people got confused. They they've been made to become confused. And the Sheikh was the says, وَأَصْبَحَ فِي النَّاسِ كَثِيرُونَ مِنْ مَنْ يُنْكِرُونَ السُّنَنَ وَيُسَمُّونَهَا بِالْبِدْعَةِ So then he, the Sheikh says, and then in, in a lot of the people they came to say. They started saying and they started rejecting the sunan, right? And the, uh, 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 all the things that are sunan, and they called it bid'ah. So those things that we say, oh, look, the Prophet ﷺ said this, uh, he, you know, and we come with a, a hadith, and uh, we say, for example, uh, you know, this, you know, the, the Prophet prayed like this, for example, the Prophet said this, and he did. This etc. from actions and approvals uh, and uh, tacit approvals and his speech, then people start seeing this as uh, religious innovation. Then the Sheikh goes on to say, says, "Wa yunkiruna laqida al-sahiha al-mustamada min al-kitab wa-sunnah wa yasifunaha bil-zalal." And likewise, then what they started doing was they started uh, rejecting the correct uh, creed and belief which is based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and they started describing it with misguidance, saying, oh, this is misguidance. And then the Shaykh says, وَيُنْكِرُونَ الْإِبَادَاتَ الثَّابِتَ عَنِ الرَّسُولَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ وَيَسِفُونَهَا بِالْبَاطِلِ Then they also started to say and started to reject the uh, all the uh, uh, affirmed types of worship that was affirmed and confirmed on the Prophet Sallallahu on the authority of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they, and they said and they started describing it as falsehood so the Shaykh he says هذا معنى قوله رحمه الله وصار العلم والفقه هو البد والضلالات and the Shaykh says this is what the original author meant when uh, when he said that knowledge and understanding and fiqh in the deen became known as um, uh, a religious innovation and misguidance. And so the Sheikh says, "Ay, anna haula asbahu yasifun al-ilm al-sahih wa al-fiqh al-sahih bi anhu bid'atun wa dalala. Wa ma hu al-ilm? Al-ilm hu al-bid' al-lati yumarisunha ma anzal Allah tabarak wa taala min sultan." And and then he further clarifies for us, and he says, "So he says that these people or those." People they start describing knowledge, the correct knowledge and understanding of the deen, uh, uh, with the, saying that oh it's bid'ah, it's a religious innovation and misguidance. And then the Sheikh asks a question. Uh, he says, "So what is ilm? What is knowledge?" And to these people, knowledge was um, religious innovation, and they pra- which they practiced uh, that which Allah has not sent down. Yeah. And not given anybody authority to do that. So we can see that um, uh, things have become uh, the opposite. So then the Sheikh he continues, he says, And so then the, the Sheikh he goes on to say, and that was what, what's with them, or the best thing that's with them. Or what they see as the best thing for them in terms of knowledge and what they do, then what what's happened is that uh, knowledge uh, or the truth uh, has been uh, mixed with falsehood, and the matters have become confused. And so the Sheikh says, yes, he says, "Wala bisal haq bil batil hada amrun la khair fi." And he says that like this, then when truth becomes uh, mixed with falsehood, then there's no good in it at all. And he says, أي خيرية في أن يلبس الحق بالباطل وتخلط على الناس وتخلط تخلط على الناس أمور وتغيب عنهم الحقيقة الناصعة المأخوذة 
min al kitab wa sunnah so when they start the uh, so called um scholars of misguidance then or the people of misguidance they start teaching mixing truth with falsehood and leading the people away from the quran and the sunnah and this is what the sheikh is saying here and then he goes on to say fa idha kana hadha khiyar ma indahum labis al haqq bil batil fa ma'na dhalika anna ha'ula fi diha'in tam wa iradin tam 'an al kitab Allah azza wa jalla wa sunnati rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallamu alayhi so then if 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 they're saying that that's the best thing with these people of misguidance is spreading uh religious innovations and misleading the people and taking them away from the Quran and Sunnah then the sheikh says in reality if if that's the case in that scenario then these people are in a complete state of loss and rejecting that which is in the book of Allah and that which uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with so that's what he mentions in that paragraph so we move on to the next paragraph the sheikh he goes on to say قال وصار العلم الذي فرضه الله تعالى على خلق على على الخلق ومدحه لا لا يتهم به الا زنديق او مجنون قوله لا يتفه به الا زنديق او مجنون اي بزعم بزعم هؤلاء فيصفون الذين يتفوهوا بالعلم الشرعي المستمد من كتاب الله عز وجل يصفونه بالجنون وربما وصفوه بالزندقه وزندقه مروق عن دين الله تبارك وتعالى فيصفون المتمسك بدينه بانه اما به جنون او يصفونه بانه زنديق او مارق او نحو ذلك من الاوصاف اسوه بالمشركين الذين وصف النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام بالصاهر والكاهن والمجنون والمفتري إلى غير ذلك من الأوصاف التي لقبوه بها ولقب بنظائرها أتباع المتمسكين بهجه السائرين على نهجه صلوات الله وسلامه عليه So then the sheikh in this paragraph he goes on to say to us that What's happened is that the knowledge that Allah has made obligatory for us to learn and to act upon and follow and that's praised that then the person who actually follows the Quran and the Sunnah as he should be doing as a Muslim then these people they start calling them names so when they see them actually call, call to the Quran and Sunnah and because they're confused themselves of what the truth is uh then they start seeing this as something incorrect and then they start calling them names so the sheikh mentions that they start calling them names they'll call them oh he's crazy or oh, he's a heretic um and all sorts of other things he's an evil one uh, and all other kinds of things as we know from the sira uh, the biography of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh that uh, what happened uh, with him sallallahu alaihi wasallam they called him you know you're a soothsayer you're a magician you're crazy and they said all kinds of things uh, other than that um regarding him uh, regarding him and, and likewise these people of also they do the same thing with the people of the sunnah um they call them names of uh of varying kinds so that's what the sheikh mentions here then he goes on to say qala wa sara man ankarahu wa ada wa sanfa fi at tahdhir minhu wa nahi anhu huwa al faqih al alim so then the affair became also like this that the one who uh you know, rejects rejects or um fights against uh or for example um or you know starts warning against uh the you know the falsehood uh, that these people are upon um then who, whoever is being warned uh, against for example if uh, let's say a simple example let's say you're warning against um um uh these people the people of falsehood that then 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 they get then then obviously they call you names as mentioned in the previous paragraph but the ones who they see as scholars then they call them you know alim or they'll call him a faqih you know one who understands the deen uh, 
And the Sheikh explains in more detail. He says here, وَصَارَ مِنْ أَنْكَرَ وَعَدَاهُ الضَّمِيرُ هُنَا يَعُودُ إِلَى الْعِلْمُ وَالْفِقْهِ الصَّحِيحِ الْمُتَمَدِّنُ الْكِتَابُ وَالسُّنَّةِ صَارَ مَنْ أَنْكَرَ الْعِلْمُ الصحيح وعاد الفقه الصحيح المستمد من الكتاب والسنه وصنف في التحذير منه اي صنف في التحذير من السنن الصحيحه والفقه الصحيح والعلم الصحيح وصنف في في التحذير منه والنهي عنه هو الفقيه العلم so whoever then started um, from the so called the the so called uh, the so called scholars of of those scholars being the scholars of misguidance who are not on the correct path then when they started Uh, waging war against the Quran and the Sunnah by telling people not to follow the, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu to avoid this and avoid that and teaching them the incorrect belief uh, contrary to the Quran and Sunnah then those people start in high esteem and saying oh this guy is an alim <coughs> and this guy is a faqih you know uh, one who understands the religion so the, the, the kind of scales and it's gone topsy-turvy So this is the affair that the Sheikh mentions <coughs> that's become of the people and a lot of the people. So then the Sheikh, he goes on to say, وَصَنِفَ فِي التَّحْذِيرِ مِنْهُ وَنَّهِي أَنْهُ هُوَ الْفَقِيَ الْعَلَالِمُ الْعَلَالِمُ وَهَذَا مَوْجُودٌ تَصْنِيف كُتُبِ أو تَصْنِيف كُتُبِ فِي رَدِّ السُنَنْ وَالْإِشَادَةِ الْبِرْعِ وَإِحْيَاءَ الْضَلَالَاتِ وَيُسِفُ أَصْحَابَهَا بالعلماء. أو أصحابها بالعلماء ويلقبون بالفقهاء وربما قيل في حقه إمام وربما قيل إمام الأئمة من قبل أتباعه من الغوغاء والجهال <تصفيق> وهو ليس عنده إلا نشر الخرافة إما نشر القبورية وتعلق بالقبور والكذب على رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام أو نشر الأحاديث الواهية الضعيفة أو تحريف الآيات عن معانيها أو حكاية القصص وذكر الرؤى والمنامات ويكون الكتاب كله مبنيا على هذا الأمر ولا ترى فيه. So then the Sheikh goes on to say he says and this is present in the time of writing so you know obviously within our lifetimes as well that books have been authored uh, that uh, uh, rebuke or um, reboot uh, the Sunan of the Prophet Sallallahu and instead uh, they try the purpose of those books is try to spread their uh, list innovations and trying to revive uh, the misguidances and you know uh, describing uh, the uh, you know these authors or describing them with words as ulama or giving them nicknames or names uh, or titles such as fuqaha um, and the sheikh says maybe even it might be said uh, uh, about them that oh he's an imam or such and such is the imam of imams or uh, and, and these kinds of um, uh, uh, you know titles are given to them from the, the people of ignorance And also, uh, and if you look into their books, for example, into these misguided books, then all you'll find with them is superstitions. You will find also with them things about grave worshipping and shirk uh, and those kinds of, you know, uh, um, issues. And also you'll find lies upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You'll also find spread within the, uh, them uh, Uh, you know, all sorts of weak ahadith that are not supported. Uh, you'll also find within them uh, um, where uh, certain ayat of the Quran, the verses of the Quran have been um, uh, explained, but far away from the actual meaning, you know. And so with all these kinds of errors, then you you see that These people are spreading nothing but misguidance. And the Sheikh also mentions you may also find within them, you know, stories, you know, false stories. You find within them, you know, mentioning of dreams or visions far from the truth. Yeah. Uh, 
and you'll find that the, the whole book the, or their book or their books are based on or the very foundation of their books is a uh, is, is is nothing but uh um you know uh uh is full of khurafat and you know superstitions and all kinds of misguidance. Then the Sheikh mentions here where we've, hi- where we've highlighted the text in green. Uh, it mentions says Laanatullahi ala al-yahud wa nasara ittakhadu qubur anbiya'ihim masajid. Inna shirar al-khalqi inda Allah alladhina yattakhidhun al-qubur masajid. Hadhi al-ahadith al-sahiha la taraha. Tara imma ayatan يحرفونها عن معناها ويصرفونها عن مدلولها مثل استشهاد هؤلاء وكل وكل من كتب من كتب من كتب من كتب من كتب منهم في هذا الباب بقول الله تعالى قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا سورة القاف 21 وهذا أمر حكاه الله عز وجل عن أهل الغلبة وهم كفار كما يدل على ذلك سياق الآيات في سورة الكحف سيستدلون به لفعل هؤلاء ويتركون ما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قبل أن يموت بلحظات لعنة الله على اليهود والنصار اتخذوا قبور أنبياء المساجد سيستوك ده فرسا so then the sheikh he goes on to say uh you know uh, he quotes uh, a part of the hadith from prophet sallallahu alaihi hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi where he said that uh, curse be upon the curse of allah be upon the jews and the christians they took the graves of their prophets as places of prostration and worship also, in Nashir al Khalq in the Allah and Ladi and Yetah Dunu Kabur Masajid, the one, the, the most evil of creation with Allah Jalawala are those who take their graves as places of prostration. These are Sahih Hadith, the Prophet, وسلم, and Sheikh mentions that here as well. He says that they don't see this, they, they don't see these, uh, you know, the likes of these Hadith, you know, they don't look at them. But they'll, they'll they'll come to a Quran ayah, for example, and not understand it and explain it away far from its intended meaning. And you'll see that a lot of uh, so-called people of knowledge uh, or that claim knowledge, sorry, uh, they do these kinds of things. Uh, and so it's, you need to be aware uh, of these sort of things that they do to try to justify their belief or to justify their desire for whatever reason that is. So they take it far away from the meaning. Um, and so, for example, the ayah that we read there is from Surah Al-Kahf, and we'll all be familiar with it, verse 21. If we go to there, if we go there now, inshallah, uh, we will have a look. So verse 21. We'll also read verse 20 uh, shortly as well. You can see at the bottom. So we'll read that as well, inshallah. As we made their case known to the people that they might know that the promise of Allah is true and that there can be no doubt about the hour. Remember when they, the people of the city, disputed among themselves about their case. They said, construct a building over them. Their Lord knows best about them. Then those who won their point said, most probably the disbelievers, we verily shall build a place of worship over them. So clearly, as we can see, this is to do with those disbelievers. This is not an evidence to be used uh, to then say, "Oh, yeah, we we can, you know, raise make shrines over the dead people and uh, and worship there." And also, it's not clearly, as we can see, even in the English language, when we've read this, it's clear to any right-minded person uh, with no following, no desire that you can see that that is clear. Yeah, what the meaning is here and who is it about? You know. So then the sheikh goes on to say. Uh, he says that uh, he says that this is about the people of Galaba. So in 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 what Allah mentioned here in this ayah, verse twenty one, uh, and he says that the people follow this and they take it away from its correct meaning and they try to use this as evidence, uh, of course incorrectly, um, and uh, and they misplace uh, this. 
uh, to justify their beliefs. And also, it says they leave off what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Like these two ahadith, just two. There's many more. But these two ahadith here, they leave that, and they, you know, they don't consider it. But the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about that. It's clear. It's clear. So when we put this and that together, we can see what 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 was intended here. But they leave off the Sheikh saying that they're leaving off these the, the likes of these ahadith. Uh, and the Sheikh mentions when the Prophet Sallallahu was in his last moments of life, when death was approaching and he only had a few moments uh, remaining, uh, then he said, he said this, this, he said, may the, may the curse of Allah be upon the Jews and the Christians. They took the, the graves of the prophets as places of prostration, masajid. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, Wala yasihu. أن نقول هذا شر من من قبلنا وشر من قبلنا جاء بنسخه لا يصح أن نقول هذا الكلام لماذا لأنه لو كان شر لمن قبل لمن قبلنا أيصح أن يقول عليه الصلاة والسلام لعنة الله على اليهود والنصارى تخذوا قبور أنبياء مساجد. So this is another important point that Sheikh mentions. He also says that we we can't say you know the things like or you know it was about the people before us, you know, like it was revealed, uh, you know, this ayah was revealed about the people before us, like the Christians or the Jews. Um, it, it says that we can't say that. Why? Uh, and that, you know, uh, why? Because the Sheikh mentions here, we can't say things like this. He says, why? He says, because if that was the legislation that Allah sent down to them, the ones who came before us, like the Jews and the Christians, then would it be correct for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then to say the curse uh, may the curse of Allah be upon the Jews and the Christians? They took their uh, graves, uh, or they took their uh, they took the graves of their prophets as places of worship. Would that make sense? It doesn't make it just not possible to say that when you look at it properly, um, because if Allah had sent the law down and that was a law for them, then can you then? Ask to Allah to curse them when Allah sent that law down. So uh, it's not possible to say that, and it's, and we can understand it from here anyway. That it was it was the disbelievers, yeah. Uh, that took their they disbelieved because it's disbelief. This is this isn't what uh, Allah was sent down because it goes against that universal principle with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is to do with Tawheed, you know. So it's always Tawheed. The Deen of Allah is all. The Deen of Allah has always been Islam. What does that mean? Meaning that it's been it's the Deen of Tawheed, where we single out worship, uh, uh, and and the Deen of Allah is singling him out in all forms of worship for him alone, right? So then, when you look at it like this properly, they, they can't use that. It cannot be used as evidence here. Yeah? So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, "Hada la yuqal." فاتخاذ القبور ليس شرعا لمن قبلنا بل هو باطل في أديان جميع الأنبياء. And the Sheikh goes on to say here, then he says that this, uh, or those people who who came before us, who took the the graves of their prophets as places of prostration and worship, he says that this is not what Allah would legislate, and this is not what those prophets came to their people with. Rather, it's falsehood that the people uh, came with themselves. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's shirk um, and the shaykh says wal ayatu dhikrun li hal ahli al-ghalaba min ghayr al-muslimin and, and, and as mentioned earlier then the, the, this is about the disbelievers who are not from the muslimin so then the shaykh mentions the ayah before it which we will read now the ayah before it um, innahum in yadharu alaykum yarjumukum aw yuidukum fi millatihim so let's go and have a look at that. That's the ayah before it. So let me go to that bit. So we'll, we'll read the whole ayah. Likewise, we awaken them from their long, deep sleep that they might question one another. A speaker from among them said, How long have you stayed here? They said, We have stayed perhaps a day or part of a day. They said, Your Lord alone knows best how long you have stayed here. So send one of you with his silver coin of yours to the town and let him find out which is the good lawful food. Oh, sorry, I'm read, I've, I've read the wrong ayah. Next one, apologize. 
for if they so just disregard that completely what I said. So it's this ayah verse twenty four. If they come to know of you, they will stone you to death or or abuse and harm you or turn you back to their religion. And in that case, you will never be successful. Yeah. So that's the ayah. So disregard the first one I mentioned. I was reading the wrong line. Uh, apologies. So let's carry on. Inshallah. And then, uh, yeah, we nearly finished. Another five or ten minutes, we should be done. So then the Sheikh was say, Asiyaku wadihun wasafa li uh, wasafa li hal ghayr al muslimin. So the Sheikh says that the context is clear here. It's a description of uh, it's a description of the people who are not from the Muslims, the disbelievers. He's mentioning the disbelievers here. And he says that they use this as evidence. Uh, uh, they use this verse as evidence for them to, you know, um, uh, they use it as evidence for them to grave worship, for, ex for example, and do all those kinds of things. And they leave off the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he's mentioned clearly up here, where there's a clear warning regarding the most evil of the people with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the in the, in the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who, who, who make uh, their graves places of worship and, 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 and prayer where you know prayer takes place and places of worship uh, and hadith uh, when the Prophet uh, said may, uh, may ask us be upon the Jews and Christians who took their uh, the, the graves of their prophets as places of worship and prostration so it's clear, the context is clear. So let's move on. The Shaykh says here Al Ami al Miskin Ida Kala Lahum Wahidu Minha Ula Allahu Yakul Kala Ladina Gulabu Ala Amrihim Lanatta Hizan Alehim Masjida Hadal Quran Natikun Bittihad al Kubur Masjid Hadha Kitabullah Natikun Fakaifa Yakuluna Inna Hulaya Jews Al Ami Miskin Yakul Lahu Aidan Iftaha If افتح سورة الكهف ويريه الآية في سورة في سورة يقول كيف يقال إنه هذا حرم حرم أو حرام العامي ما يدري ثم يردف هذه الآية التي حرف معناها بحديث يورده للعوام أن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم وما قال من اتقد في حجر النفع مثلا أو أشياء من هذا القبيل يكذبونها ويفترونها ثم يردف ذلك بقصص قصة فلان وقصة فلان ثم تجمع في كتاب ويعد يعد علما ويعد مؤلفه مؤلفه عالم فقيه وهو كله كذب على الله وكذب على رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقول الله بلا علم وتلفيق وتزوير وكتم للحق ولبس للحق بالباطل وخلط للأمور ويسمى الكتاب كتاب علم ويسمى مؤلفه عالم فقيه مؤلفه عالم فقيه والذين يكتب والذي يكتبون من جمرة هذا الرجل العوام الجحال ويغترون ويقعون في أنواع من الباطل هذا مثال قل في جميع أبواب الدين مثل هذا عندما يتصدر للناس دعاة الباطل ودعاة الضلال فيفسدون في الناس بمثل هذه الطريقة فالمؤلف رحمه الله وضع هذا الأصل نصحا للناس حتى لا يختلط على عوام المسلمين وعلى المبتدئين وطلبة العلم لا تختلط عليهم الأمور ويعرفون حقيقة الأمر. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say in this long paragraph that he says that you know you know the uh, the the general person if it's if he if he said to him uh, from one of them if he said to them allah says you know the ayah that we mentioned qala ladina ghalabu al amrihim lanattakhidanna alayhim masjida and if we go back to ayah just to refresh ourselves if we've forgotten then let's go there let's read that 
So then it says, yeah, it says, when they, the people of the city, disputed among themselves about their case, they said, construct a building over them, their law was best about them. Then those who won their point said, most probably the disbelievers, we verily shall build a place of worship over them. Regarding this ayah, if I said that to him, he'll say, this is the Quran. You know, this is the Quran, you know, being pronounced, you know, it's being spoken here. Uh, and the Quran is saying, you know, uh, taking the taking the graves as places of prostration they, and they'll say for example uh, the, the the general person will say oh this is the book of Allah you know being uh, mentioned here or you know uh, uh, so how are they saying it is not permissible so they'll come like this because they didn't understand it uh, and then he'll for example the the, the, the general person he'll, he'll say for example if, if we said to him also open Surah Al-Kahf and he'll, and he'll be shown to him the ayah, uh, this ayah in the surah, and he'll say, how can it be said that this is haram, you know? And the shaykh goes say says, why? Because because the army, the 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 general people from the awam, you know, they they, they don't know. And then then what the what will happen is they'll come with the ayah that that has been uh, explained in a completely the wrong way. Uh, been taken completely out of context, uh, and and then they'll you know and then they they get confused and they don't understand the meaning and also in terms of the hadith as well, like they, they'll come with the hadiths you know fabricated or weak hadith you know such such as for example, whoever believes in in a stone it, it benefits him, you know things like this they come with these things that we we clearly know that contradict our creed, and they'll come with the likes of these. Things uh, and of course, you know, lies. Uh, you know, uh, you know, they'll come with lies, uh, and other than that, they'll come with stories, a story of this, you know, such and such a person, story of another person, and they'll gather all of this together and put it into a book. And they'll consider, uh, you know, uh, they'll get they'll, this will be put in a book, and the author will be considered a scholar, a faqih, one who has understanding the deen, and all is full of his lies. Um, and you know, made up things in there, and superstitions and stories and likes of that. And you know, truth will be mixed with falsehood, and the affairs will become mixed, and people will find it hard to know what the truth actually is, and they'll be misguided by way of that. And the ignorant ones, they you know, they they don't know, and they just take it and believe it, and then they spread it as well, and they be tricked like this. Uh, uh, in this in this way, and shape and form, uh, and then the shaykh goes on to say that there'll be you know people come and this will be presented to them, and the the callers to misguidance will corrupt the people uh, by way of this method, for example, um, you know, uh, and and the shaykh says that the author of this book we we're reading from, that's why he 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 placed this foundation an important principle for advice as an advice to the people up until the affairs do not become mixed for them and that the muslims are clear on what is required of them and also for the beginners uh, uh, and the students of knowledge the seekers of knowledge and so that the affairs do not become mixed and that in order for them uh, in pur purpose and in order for them uh, to know uh, the truth and what the true affairs are. Yeah. So then the Shaykh on say, "Qala rahimahullah taala al aslu khamis." So uh, this is the fifth principle that we've reached. So uh, we'll stop there, inshallah, and we'll continue next week from the fifth principle. So we'll, I think it's a good time now. We've reached nearly forty-five minutes, inshallah. We'll continue and fresh start from the fifth principle next week, bidna taala. So Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. واستغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته